Sun Life Financial is proud to host this roundtable on healthy workplace cultures in partnership with the HR Reporter. It's part of our thought leadership platform, The Conversation, which brings together leaders and experts to deliver the best thinking in group benefits both inside and outside our organization. With an aging population and persistent levels of obesity, Canada is seeing rising levels of diabetes. More than 20 people are diagnosed with the disease every hour of every day, according to the Canadian Diabetes Association. And the costs for treatment are considerable, with employers reporting sizable drug bills, along with issues around absenteeism, disability leaves, and performance. Canadian HR Reporter recently moderated a roundtable, sponsored by Sun Life Financial, that brought together several experts to discuss the challenges of the disease and possible solutions. In this video, the first of a three-part series, panelists talk about the impact diabetes can have when it comes to the employee, the workplace, and the population in general, including physical and mental health issues, along with day-to-day -day management of the disease. So when we look at the issue around diabetes, when we know that 3.4 million Canadians are suffering with diabetes, that's a huge number. And then when you add on to that, you layer in the piece about pre-diabetes being 9 million in total with diabetes and pre-diabetes. 9 million Canadians, that's like a huge burden to society. And to the individual, it's an incredible impact. So we have to think about the individual, about society, about the workplace, and all kinds of things. Um, the stats would show that between 2000 and 2010, um, the, the population with diabetes doubled in Canada from uh, 1.3 million to 2.5 million, and, and today it's at 3.3. 3.3 million. So it's it's uh, it's increasing every day. 29% um, of the population has diabetes or prediabetes, and, and we expect that to continue to rise unless we can continue to um, pursue these prevention programs, which have been shown to to decrease the impact of, of diabetes. So um, there is room for improvement, but with the aging population, with our current levels of overweight and obesity, um, and and the changes in our demographics in terms of um, the the background ethnicity. So there's a lot of factors that go into those um, changing rates of, of diabetes, but uh, that that slope that's that's going up is is pretty is pretty convincing. If you're not managing your diabetes properly, same thing manifests at the workplace. You're fatigued, you can't concentrate as well. You just have a lot of physical difficulties. You can also get a lot of burnout. So people start to become really frustrated with the fact that they have this chronic condition that we have really good treatments for, but we certainly have no cures. And so for most people, they're going to be taking some form of treatment for most of their lives. And we also know that there's lots of links between depression and diabetes, both type 1 and type 2. And again, that's partly related to just stress related to managing illnesses. We also know that, unfortunately, a lot of the treatments for people with mental illness cause weight gain in type 2 diabetes. So sometimes it's diabetes comes first, and then they develop difficulties with depression or other problems. Sometimes the depression comes first, and the treatments that we need in order to help somebody function with depression or another mental illness unfortunately causes problems with weight gain and increases the risk of type 2 diabetes. We don't really understand exactly how that association works yet, but it means that this population is vulnerable on a lot of different levels and interventions need to look at a lot of different pieces and we need to be very proactive because absolutely there are certain lifestyle factors that we can help put in place. We can help with exercise programs, we can help with stress management, we can help with you know, giving some education around healthy eating. There's in terms of management um, throughout the workday, a person needs to monitor their blood glucose. Um, that can be self-monitoring um, in the workplace as well as um, taking insulin by injection or through an insulin pump. Um, a person may also need to have regular stacks throughout the day um, at their workplace uh, consistently through the day. And um, sometimes in cases of hypoglycemia, uh, they need to treat their, their blood sugar through the day. So that's kind of the impact on the workday that, that people might experience. I think the other piece is that our treatments are certainly getting better, both from a mental health perspective and from a diabetes management perspective. We have better options. And that is definitely a positive, a success story. But... What that also means is that more people are now in their workforce 
managing these chronic illnesses. And we know that right now the two biggest costs to employers that are across the spectrum, it doesn't matter what type of employment you're looking at, whether it's at a white collar, blue collar, working in the health field, doing different things, the two biggest costs to employers are managing absenteeism and presenteeism secondary to both obesity and its medical consequences, type 2 diabetes being the big one, and mental health issues. And then when these things co-occur in an individual, they're going to be very, very challenged. So they're going to be at work because our medications allow them to be, and that's great. But if we haven't done other things to help them function at an optimal level, and we haven't helped them try to do other things to get their illnesses under control, they're going to be there, but they're not going to be focused, or not, they're not going to be able to work at their full level of capacity. And then that's a big problem. You know, They're either going to have to miss work or going to be there and not being able to work the way they could a few years ago when their diseases were better under control. And so those are both significant costs to the employer. So yes, we do have an employee in our warehouse, um, self-identified. So we ask all of our employees coming in whether or not they have a challenge or a risk that they are that they feel comfortable identifying, obviously, because we can't ask them certain questions. You can probably speak better towards that. So we do have an employee who self-identified. The um, I guess the upside from our perspective is his spouse also does work in the warehouse, so is very aware of condition, can assess day-to-day, minute-by-minute, if there is an issue. We've trained our health and safety manager and my operations manager to actually work with his insulin. So we brought... We brought a nurse on site, and he keeps insulin in a fridge, and whenever he needs to, we've trained multiple people in the warehouse to be able to administer just in case there's someone like his spouse who's not around to do that. Um, We're we're a little bit hesitant. He does drive a forklift, so we have an added you know, we have an added safety risk, a potential risk. So we asked him temporarily when he feels his levels are um, unstable to not drive the forklift. So we're working with him towards accommodation issues because that's very, very important from our perspective. Um, he's working with us fantastically, and it's been a great partnership.